So Graham, off the back of last night's talk, yeah. um, what was really interesting, because we were obviously doing this tour around the UK, you, you got involved and you came up and talked in front of the audience, but what we noticed as coaches is, um, I think people are crying out for information about, yeah, sure. you know, yeah. we obviously come to Rivington Alpine because of what, what you do with Boots, but the audience interaction is massive, but uh, what, what they really liked last night was your, your philosophy, how you set up a boot fit. Yeah. Um, and we thought it'd be really good to film this so we can put it out there to let people know actually how you do it. How I mean, yeah. yeah, so I mean, the main thing that you've got to uh, ensure when you're fitting boots is you've got a process. Yeah. You've got to have a good process and you've got to stick to that process with every single person. And then the only variable is actually the client. Yeah. Uh, and that allows you to, um, to, to think about those variables in respect of the type of boot you're going to fit, the socks that they might need to wear. Yeah the type of footbed you're going to use, all that kind of thing. So the process is key. Yeah. Um, information is key. Getting lots of data from the customer about the skiing, the skiing aspirations, what yeah. they want to do with the product in the future, issues they might have had previously, injuries, all that kind of thing. It's kind of like a holistic approach. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at the skier as a whole rather than just, well, what is the length of the foot? Yeah. That's the least important thing. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the assessment process, we're normally looking at uh, the posture. Yeah. So low leg down mainly. Yeah. Can be above that if we've got serious issues. But low leg down, what posture have we got? Have we got a pronated uh, foot? Have yeah. we got a, a nice neutral ankle? You know, have we got any evidence of bone spurs, things like that? Yeah. And then we're looking at flexibility. Yeah. So how flexible is the foot? How flexible is the chain? Yeah. Um, and the system of the muscles and the skeleton together. Yeah. So how flexible is that? Is it going to take a really shaped footbed product? Will it not stand that? Do you yeah. need to be a little bit less aggressive with your footbed, things like that? Uh, and then uh, a really important part of it, which absolutely is very symbiotic to what you were doing last night, uh, is range of motion. Yeah. So range of motion in, in the ankle joint in particular uh, is very interesting to me as a boot fitter and actually how we probably met the yeah, uh, uh, ski show many moons ago. Yeah. Um, so ankle range of motion is so important. Yeah. And there are two fundamental measurements that we take during an assessment, and one of them is ankle range of motion, in particular dorsal flexion. Yeah. So how can we get pressure into the ski? But that was that was really well said last night. I think that that was where the penny dropped. So we we explained things from our point of view as coaches, but when you came out and explained it. And it was just like that, that's it, it yeah. you do what you don't, you know. And, yeah. and that, those scores that we were seeing in the room last night, we were some people were scoring like 20 centimeters on the room test, yeah. some people were scoring five or six centimeters, and yeah. then seeing that difference between left and right, which, which is obviously always interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, one, one of the things that you're really looking for immediately when you see any client is you're looking for symmetry or asymmetry. Yeah. So often you get a client where one side is really good. Yeah. You know, you've got great measurements, you're right in the zone where you need to be, yeah. and then the other side's completely the opposite. Um, the, there are often fairly clear reasons for that, yeah. uh, but my job's not to change somebody's life. No. My job's to get them comfy in a pair of ski boots and make them perform well on the skis. Yeah. Um, and actually having too much range of motion can cause also just as much problems yeah, as yeah, too yeah. little. So I myself have got very high dorsiflex, yeah. you know, 40, on the way that I measure it, yeah. uh, 46, 47 degrees. Yeah. Um, so my problem is that when I have a crash, especially when I'm off pace, go too much. I'm straight out the front door yeah, yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, my friends love it, but <laughs> me not so much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, dorsal flex is so, so important for us. Yeah. Um, so it, it governs whether you can interact with the boot properly yeah. uh, and therefore press the ski. Yeah. It governs um, how the forefoot feels when it's under pressure. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people's forefoot uh, pressure issues under the ball of the foot can actually be traced back to the ankle joints, right. not having enough range of motion. Yeah. And when you talk in skiing, you talk about breaking. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they break at the metatarsal heads. So these are the meta heads here, yeah. where the toes bend. Yeah. So if you imagine the way that an ankle works when it's when it's when it's flexing like so. Yeah. If you reach your mechanical range of motion, it yeah. will just stop. Yeah. But the forces of skiing do not stop. No, of course. Yeah. So what happens then is, yeah. you do that inside the boots. Now that is obviously problematic for the heel in terms of control. Yeah. But the main problem with it is, is it forces huge pressures under this area of the foot. Yeah. And there's a lot of nerves there. You get big problems. Yeah. 
So the, the anchor wind and motion thing is about steep performance for sure, but yeah. it's also about uh, boot comfort. Yeah. Can you get the boot on and off? You know, you've not got a good anchor range of motion. Absolutely. You're going to struggle with it. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time talking about this, like last night and just now, really. Yeah. Um, and because it's so important, it's it's, uh, it's where you're connected to the ground, right? And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's your interface. Yeah. Um, and if you've got a really good chain for you to press from the boot through the footbed into the binding into the ski, yeah. well, that ski's going to behave yeah, yeah. the way that you want it to behave. And, and I treat my boot fits as, um, you know, 100% of the customers who come through the door, with the exception of the operator, have got one word in their head when they walk through the door, and that's comfort. Yeah. Yeah, Give me yeah, comfort. Yeah. And I've got one word in my head. Yeah. I'm going performance. Yeah. But there's a nice balance, there's a yeah, because it, yeah, yeah, because it means if I give you a really good performance fit, yeah. the foot will relax. Yeah. And a relaxed foot's a happy foot for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, and just going back, I, I said there were two really important measurements. Yeah. So the, we've got the uh, posture, we've got the flexibility, and now we've got range of motion. Yeah. Then we're into measuring. Yeah. All right. And we take 12 different measurements of each foot. Well. So we're loaded and unloaded. Yeah. And width, length of arch, length of foot total, yeah. and the most important measurement, which is symbiotic with dorsiflex, yeah. Yeah. is what we would call, I'll just go for the camera, the heel instep perimeter. Yeah. So we go from a point on one side of the heel, up and over the instep, right. to the other side. And that's called heel instep perimeter, yeah. and that measurement is our most important measurement, and yet most people who come to the shop will just think it's the length, yeah. or the width. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, High in steps or low in steps cause us far more fitting problems than, yeah. than the length of the boot ever will. So once we've got those 12 measurements and we've got some good information about the skiers' yeah. current ability, hopefully they're going to take yes to the question, are we going to have any further tuition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. touched on that last night for sure. Yeah. Um, and what are those skiing aspirations? Coupled with the data of yeah. the assessment, I can then go in my range yeah. or in a model range of a manufacturer Okay, that will work, that will work, that will work. Yeah. And then it's a process of elimination with, with those shells or sometimes one individual shell if you've got a particular fit. Um, and once we've got down, we drilled it down to the shell, we then move on to the next part of the system, which is the footbed. Yeah. So um, to get to the correct shell is actually fairly easy. Yeah. Um, because you shouldn't be putting products on a customer that won't fit them. And you were saying something last night about the volume, like to make sure this is done right. I guess in ski terms, it's a bit like us making sure there's enough people on the ski course that they'll get put into the right groups, where you've yeah. got sort of seven, big, six people with all different levels. Yeah, yeah. Your stock level, could you just, make, could you have said about that? You, you carry quite a lot of, you have to. Yeah, we them. have to, otherwise we can't do the job properly. Yeah. And um, my accountant doesn't like it too much, <laughs> but it, it's the way it is. So, I mean, uh, in parts of the season, we'll have around 300 pairs of boots in stock, wow. uh, which is a, a huge liability. Yeah. But, um, and you have to range it properly. So at the start of the year when I'm doing my buying, I actually do like a bit of a storyboard. Yeah. And I go, right, okay, so what I need is um, uh, intermediate level skier, yeah. advanced expert tour, and then I need different volumes. To take each of those, like that measurement. The heel is the to the four yeah. foot width of the bone structure of the foot. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll, I might need some to, to split that into, right, I need something with a really narrow heel, I yeah. need something with a wider heel. So we try and range so that um, when people walk through the door, I'm not looking at a foot going, mm, yeah, that's going to be problematic in terms of stock. That said, we do want every single person, we get people far and wide, you know, I've got a lady coming next week from the Channel Islands. Really? Well, um, I've just recently done a fitting for a lady from Cyprus. Really? So we get people travelling. Yeah. Um, and But I always say to them when they book the appointment, listen, this might not be a one-shot deal because I might look at you yeah. and decide you need something I haven't got. Yeah. And if that's the case, we'll stop. And I order it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, that's great. I mean, that, that is, I mean, it works. This is why I think it's so important that the relationship that we all try and build is yeah. like because because there's no doubt for us as coaches we go up the mountain and in the typical academy week there's always going to be that group of people like ah you know you, you just know they're not in the right boot or the yeah. process hasn't been done properly yeah so it's so in a, in, a, in a way one of the reasons we wanted to film this today was to sort of put it out there as information like a bit of a, a, yeah. a news bulletin to people try and like, educate of what an actual boot fit is yeah you know because a lot of people think that you can just walk in and pick something off the shelf or buy off the internet and you'll be you'll be good. Yeah. 
not always the case. I mean, some people will, but if you want performance um, and you're paying the amount of money that everyone pays to go skiing, yeah. actually, a pair of ski boots or a 10 year purchase for a UK skier is a drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I know a lot of people were quite interested last night when you, you, um, you quite visually made a point about how a footbed should be made and, and how yeah. our footbeds can sometimes miss the, miss the boat when it comes to sort of being exact to people. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Um, I mean, when we're refitting all the products, yeah. so, so boots that have been purchased uh, elsewhere and the, there's some issues, um, so we do a similar amount of investigation work before we touch the boots because I don't want to charge a client if we've got a horror story yeah. and we're not going to be able to fix it. Yeah. But once we say, right, the clock's running, um, this is what we're going to do, footbeds are often the culprit. Yeah. Um, are. And it's not the footbed, it's how they've been manufactured. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's the issue. And having processing that is also very important. So the assessment part of uh, the boot fitting for us, a lot of that is actually about the footbed. Yeah. You know, what type of footbed are we going to do? Because we have both brands, both Super Fit and CDAS, and we use those for different types of clients. Yeah. Um, so what are we going to use and how are we going to manufacture that? Yeah. Can we do it load bearing? Do we have to be non load bearing? You know, all that kind of thing. And once you've done that and you've made the, the mold or made the product, it's then about finishing it properly. And that's where most shops completely fall down. I was going to say, so, so what most people watching this, I think most of the viewers are going to like, yeah, I've been there, I've done the footbed, yeah. I've done that. And, and the real, watching you work this morning with, with the guys that are in here, yeah. I mean, that's the real. That's not I mean, if, we, if we say what our job is as coaches, yeah. that, that's kind of the equivalent from a booth in front of you. It's where it goes. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so finishing the job properly is, is the, the main thing. So um, the footbed is two parts. Yeah. In reality, it's uh, the moulded part, which your, your skin or your sock sits against and the foot, the foot is supported by. And then underneath, um, most footbeds, not all, but most footbeds, footbeds require some form of stabilising feature. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're still on a rounded yeah. um, product. Yeah. Now, um, there are some forces out there that say that a slight bit of inversion and eversion of the heel joint actually helps. Yeah. Uh, super feet, uh, one of those, so they're, they're, it's a rounded product. But most of the time, if we need full stability, yeah. we will heel block. And the footbed's job is to provide stability. So when, when you're talking about, so you might get sort of like see your day grinding uh, helmet over there, something like him walking in and what yeah. you're looking at it. I know you obviously cater and have helped so many races in this area yeah. and region, but you also, right across the spectrum, you look at all sorts of different levels. That that footbed, does it change in its character to do with the, the, the change in someone's ski level when, 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 you're, when you're developing and you're doing that sort of finishing work? Yes, it can. Um, in general, when you get some of these racing, even even the tiny young, young girls that come in, yeah. you know, 12 years old, yeah. Uh, they still require quite a lot of stiffness yeah. so they can apply power. Yeah. Um, in the assessment, we're, we're looking at the flexibility of the foot, and the main reason for that is saying, well, how much shape can we get in the footbed? Yeah. You know, um, if you've got a very inflexible client, yeah. then it doesn't matter what their ability level is, you can't just put a really shaped product on where they won't like it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's on a door wall. Yeah. So, I mean, this particular footbed um, I manufactured for my wife quite a long time ago and uh, you can see there's a lot of shape in it. Yeah. Um, the number one issue we have with with bad badly manufactured footbeds, sorry I'm kind of getting weather, is lack of heel cup. Right. Alright, so we can see here we have another example. It's very shallow. And it's very shallow yeah. and also it's not symmetrical. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it's uh, it's not flat across yeah, you can see that. Whereas yeah. this one is you know, point to point should be pretty flat. So yeah, that's going to be a real sort yeah, of curve. Yeah, and right. so lack of heel cup doesn't stabilise the, the yeah. you know, you're starting the heel ball and the calcaneus, you're not stabilising it properly. Then we get the rest of the mould done, you know, that we're just putting them in subtail and neutral, which is the best position biomechanically for your ankle joints. Yeah. Uh, we're not trying to correct anything. No, you know, no. we're not medical practitioners. We're trying to increase performance, comfort, stability. Yeah. And that was the thing as well, another one of those penny drop moments for the audience yesterday was talking about from the moment someone clips in, they're moving laterally over their feet or their feet yeah. moving laterally around the hips, whichever way it's the type of turn. And that, and that is that whole point, is that that's got to be absolutely underneath. And yeah, because it's not only the downhill, the turning ski, yeah. it, that's not the, the whole issue. Yeah. As you'll know from coaches, yeah. uh, from coaching, the uphill ski is often an issue. Yeah. You know, the guys can't get it out of the way, they yeah, can't, yeah. can't create angle of attack, yeah. uh, they then end up stalling it a little bit yeah. and that, that causes all kinds of problems. So um, 
it's important in both phases of movement. Um, when we come to the rest of the manufacturer, we've got to heel block it properly yeah. so it becomes stable. So again, we, this product in my right hand here has been properly blocked. We actually make our own yeah. heel box with our own EPA. And the reason we do that is we can get a, a big full platform. Uh, how long do you, so, so what's interesting I think from the viewer's point of view is, is how long do you, and this is also going into the point about explaining the value yeah. uh, and the reason, but, but how long would you typically take to get to a, a finished product? Like what many sort of man minutes do you put in there? So the footbed takes normally around 20 to 30 minutes to, to, to manufacture. So it's not a, it's not a huge long process. Yeah. Um, Fitting boots for us is a two to three hour process. Right. Okay. So you're looking at about a sixth or maybe maybe twenty percent, twenty five percent of the um, of the fitting time is on the footbed. Yeah. Um, depending on the brand, some some footbeds like these take more time post molding yeah. to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas suit feet take more time to mold. Got you. And very easy to finish. Yeah. Um, so once we've got the heel block on, we can see that this grey heel block here is actually um, a supply heel block from Cedars. Yeah. And we don't use them. Yeah. They're too thin, you can't get a good grind on them, and as you can see, that's it. it's gone straight through, it's a shoddy job. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is, we put the, the footbed on a, on a flat surface, we can see it's, it's not doing its job. You know, it's just not doing its job. The yeah. roll, the la longitudinally, you know, you imagine trying to set an edge on that, yeah. that's not stable. So and it, it, it's the delay as well, so there, yeah. there's that type of thing happening, you skier can lose confidence, or all that sort of precision. But that, that was again, you know, looking back to last night's one, what to do with that. When you came out and showed them, I mean, that really took people's attention. Like, yeah. wow, it, it can be made incorrectly. Yeah, absolutely can. Uh, and that previous point that you just made about time length, about yeah. um, when, when, when you roll the ski and, and we're on edge and we're applying pressure, yeah. um, old school skiers yeah, will yeah. think it's all about the big toe, but actually it's about the whole, the whole of the foot yeah. Yeah. and especially the instep. So when the ski's on the side here and we're pressing, if in that phase when we're rolling, if we're not in contact with the footbed, yeah, it's... It, we're going to have a time lag. Yeah. And imagine being a slalom racer. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you if you take say an extra tenth of a second, yeah. for your decision to get into the ski, you're right. out. You're out. Game over. You see yeah. that. Yeah. Or you're into recovery. And it can be the same like for the guys. We take if we take skiers into like Berlin, like in a Tour Tan or John Sand, you've got that top steep initiation yeah. section. That's where you definitely don't want to have any, any yeah, yeah. delay on that. And also, if, if you've not got a good mould at that point, then you're going to wash energy away as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've only got a certain amount of energy each day. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people struggle with injury towards the end of the day because and everyone's got tired. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that if, um, if someone hasn't got this set up correctly, it's, it's only going to put more stress into the joint. Up yeah. the whole chain. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Up the whole chain. Uh, so once we've heel blocked, yeah. what we get is that stable. That's solid. It's not moving. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's really cool. We've got a nice manufactured footbed, nice and stable. Uh, and then the next bit where um, a lot of shops fall down is they don't what we call interface it properly. Right. So each boot will come with from the manufacturer yeah. with a standard footbed in it. Yeah. Now, in reality, they're just for volume, so you can try the boots on. Yeah. The manufacturers know that any good boot fits is going to put yeah. a footbed yeah. in that. So they're, they're just a throwaway item, which is unfortunate in current climate yeah, times, yeah, but that's yeah. where we are. Um, when you take that standard product out and put this in, this should be exactly the same silhouette as the one that came out. So right. that it sits in the boot yeah, yeah, yeah. completely naturally and it doesn't affect the liner, it doesn't affect the, the shell or anything like that. Yeah. The amount that we see that haven't been interfered properly. So you end up with a footbed that's essentially too big. Yeah. It does that inside the boot, yeah, it causes yeah. all kinds of pressure problems. I've seen, I've been seen that with our just with clients coming out. You know, they yeah. definitely have seen that where it hasn't been properly size checked before we finish it. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. And like we're doing the ski show this weekend, yeah. and um, myself and another boot fitter called Colin, and we are offering kind of uh, boot refits, problems, things like that, and um, any charges will go to the DSUK if it's oh, really? a small spot yeah, so as a, as a a charity contribution, yeah. And one of the number one things last year, yeah. everybody who came in, we pulled the footbed out, and it hadn't been in space properly. Yeah. I remember you saying, I mean, that's one thing I've envisioned going back to the the, uh, the National Snow Show last year was that exact point. Yeah, yeah. So you were getting, it was obvious that the stand that you and Colin had was was something different. You know, so yeah. people they came in and they looked at it, and and that was Colin's same point. What he mentioned is like, there's so many people like, yeah, that's the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and it's such an easy fix. Yeah. Uh, and it really annoys me actually, you know. Uh, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll come in, and it might only be so. What they do, they'll draw around it, yeah. and then when they trim it, they're not accurate to the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a mill that side and a mill that side, that's two mills too big, yeah. and it's going to have an effect. So yeah. yeah, they need these fixing properly. So and once that's finished, you know that this will last the life of the boat yeah. quite easily. Um, it is designed purely for a ski product, it's not designed to bend, yeah. so you wouldn't put it in a normal piece of footwork. Yeah. There are other products for that. Um, this will last the life of the boot. And, and again, going back to the costing side of it, um, we believe that this is the value for the item. Yeah. This is what's going to give you the great ski here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we made it compulsory in, in our shop to, to have some form of footwear product. It doesn't necessarily have to be a custom one. But with 90% of our clients it is. Yeah. Um, so we came the appointment fee that we charge is purely to make sure that everybody gets a footprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, and that's worked really well for us. Yeah. Um, you know, nobody questions it anymore. Um, sometimes it's difficult to get over to the client exactly what footbed's doing. Yeah. So we have three exercises we do with them in the boots. Yeah. Uh, one boot's got a footbed in, one boot hasn't. Right. I mean, three exercises, and you can see the light bulb. Straight, they yeah. can feel it, yeah, like straight away. That's a, yeah, that's a really good idea actually uh, so to show them with or without. Yeah, demonstrate it. Yeah. yeah, we do a balance test. Um, we do a edging yeah. demonstration, and then we do a stability with the heel. So there are the three things that we demonstrate with the foot bed in and foot bed out. Yeah, and you can see it straight away. And there's no question that. Yeah, yeah. but uh, this is the two big things obviously help us as coaches. The in terms of the, the, the backwards forwards flexing motion. And the lateral control, you know, that that's that's huge. That, they're, they're the two the first two points we talk about in, in the talks, but yeah. that, that makes or breaks a lot of skiers weeks before they've actually even for sure, started yeah. the course. And you know, that's the frustration for us as coaches, which is why we need to make sure there's this direct line of communication because we want to now move it forward to try to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah. Where, where, where we can get to someone before they come out. Oh yeah, for sure, and and you know you see a lot on forums um, and Facebook groups, things like that, where people say, no, why would you buy a boot in the UK? Why don't you go and buy it in resort? And then the guys can tweak it every day for you. And, go, and don't get me wrong, there are some fantastic boot fitters yeah. in ski resorts, yeah, yeah. but there are also some terrible ones. Yeah. And they only have to look after you till Friday. Yeah. And you're yeah. gone. Whereas I'm here, you. It's just you've gone back to me. Over the last, I've got twenty odd years. Amount of times I've had someone that's done that. Yeah. And whether they like it or not, they've got a blister at the end of day one. Because you'll need the tweaks and all these sort yeah. of things, and and that's their week over, and that's happened. You know, oh yeah, quite a lot. yeah. I mean, I, I, I was on a ski tour. This is quite a long time ago, uh, and a guy was in another group in the mountain hot and staying, and his trip was completely ruined. And it was a trip of a lifetime yeah. for him. He'd, yeah. he'd worked up a lot of money. Yeah. He'd done a lot of training yeah. to try and get to the point where he could do it. It was quite a hot route, and um, and he found on day two that he, he, the Just boots he bought yeah. had two left liners in them. Oh, you're joking. And it ruined his trip, he had to be Kazakhs off. Really? Because his ankles were yeah. in the nets. So, yeah, preparation yeah. Is, is, is absolutely key. If you go into a boot fitter in the UK, you can go three, four months before your trip. Yeah. The guys that are coming out to you to do a gap course, yeah. I would say to them, I want you in September, I want yeah. you in August. Uh, races, I want you three months before your season yeah. starts, so that we can actually get the job yeah. planned on right. Because some people are a science project and yeah. they need multiple visits. The lady I spoke about, uh, who's come from Cyprus, she's going to be three visits minimum wow. um, to, to get her sorted. Um, and some people, even, you know, like there was a couple of guys here last night, I've yeah. to, I've not seen them for 12 years, and that was the last time I fit his boots. Yeah, you saw that, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the reason. I mean, so when, you, when you've got it to that stage, the footbed's made, it's all yeah. got inside the boot. Um, anything else needed, if needed, at that point, which probably not, like more times than not, but if it's yeah. tweaked, there, there, is there any final adjustments that you ever do? Or you yeah, do? yeah, absolutely. So once you can't do lots of the adjustments until you've done the foot back. Exactly. Right. So that's you've got to have the alignment yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, and you've got to have the foot and ankle sat in the boot the way it's got to sit in the boot when you see it. So yeah. the rest of it um, comes from that. So there are simple remedial things you can do. So if somebody's very voluminous ankles yeah. or calf, you might want to move the bell yeah. here to give them more volume or less volume. Yeah. Um, you might have parts in the boot to make it stiffer, softer in flex. You might have parts in the boot to change the volume. Yeah. Um, some brands have uh, injection yeah. um, substances that you can inject in to create better heel hold, things like that. Yeah. So that's all very minor remedials. Uh, there's an adjustment called cuff alignment, yeah. uh, which you 
yeah. uh, touched upon last night. Unfortunately, this boot back to the good habit. But, yeah. um, most recreational ski boots have got some form of cuff alignment. Yeah. It might only be lateral, sometimes it's also medium, yeah. so both sides. And what that is, is an adjustment of the hinge. Yeah, just grab. Perfect, Yeah. So that's the that's the compromise. So yeah, this is Del Barrel DRS, so this is a race product, um, so very, very stiff, very yeah. heavy. So here we've got a hinge point and a hinge point, and both of those hinge points are on eccentric fasteners, yep. which means it's not central. So if I move that around, I will lift or lower the hinge, yep. which will move the cuff of the boot. Yeah. I think with the same last night, if I, if I straighten my legs out, my right leg yeah, goes yeah, out slightly, yeah. so that's where that'd yeah. be really handy. So if the cuff doesn't sit to your natural angle, yeah. that will interact with, with the way that the, the, the boot sits yeah. on yeah, the ski, and yeah. therefore the ski on the snow. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you what you're doing there is um, you're messing with angle of attack, the yeah. person can't set their angles. Yeah. And if they're going straight, especially the yeah. speed races. We, we see it as, as in a coaching environment, we, we can tell when someone is clearly, there, there is something like that. There's, there's an alignment issue. Yeah. With that, with that, with that. You can normally see it, especially if you can, if you can get some footage yeah. and then freeze and yeah. move it back. You know, um, slalom races in particular, yeah. we're often doing that yeah. during turn initiation to have a look at what their angles are. Yeah. Um, now you can only really do, you can only, absolutely, you can only do cuff alignment if you've already got the footbed. Exactly, yeah, so exactly. footbed goes in without the liner, we yeah. check the alignments. Um, if we need to do an adjustment, we'll adjust. Um, a further um, adjustment you can do to that, if you've got solid heel and toes, you can actually do it with other boots, but mainly it's for solid heel and toes, is something called canting. Right. So canting is where you mess with the angle at which the boot sits, so you want to bind the bottom. the bottom of the boot yeah. to a different angle, to allow that lower leg to have its natural position yeah. and the ski be flat. And there's not many, in, in all reality, there's not many people um, that you could... Sort of no, there's two in the UK that have got the equipment to do it, yeah. and, and we're one of them. Yeah. Um, I have to say, it's quite a nasty process, yeah. the machines are... are um, aggressive machines yeah because you use two rotors um, and it's very easy to ruin a boot that's why most shops would just yeah. want you to touch it yeah. um, there's health and safety and then you, you, you ruin a product and yeah. then you can do it wrong yeah. so so yeah, yeah. Um, once we've got the cuff alignment canting done and we've done all the other small remedial jobs moving cuff belts things like that we're then into the molding process yeah and, and most modern boots um eu the new polyamines things like that um they're all heat moldable pretty much yeah um, the liners on any boot above an intermediate level boot will have some moldability to, yeah. to lesser extent to more extent depending on the level of boots. So we have ovens and hot air blowers, things yeah. like that. So they'll go in, in the oven or in the hot air blower and form them quite as fuck. Yeah. And what that's doing is just uh, kind of kick the molding process really, yeah. the yeah. wearing process. Um, it shouldn't be used as a be all and end all to make the boot fit. Yeah. Um, it's just a final kind of icing on the cake type yeah, thing. Yeah. And then that person should just go and ski them. Yeah. Um, two to three days normally worrying in the process for a pair of ski boots. Yeah. And we will normally say to people, if we need to do any remedials, yeah. um, so shell expansions, yeah. grinding, yeah, things yeah. like that, we won't do that until Straight the away, yeah. So we'll let them have the ski. Yeah. I guess you're quite lucky here because you've obviously got places like the Chill Factory, you've got a couple of dry slopes nearby, so they've actually got a chance to yeah, get it. Yeah, they've got a chance to use them, yeah. uh, especially if we've got problem trials. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 something yeah. you know they're going to be an issue. Yeah. Um, we, want to, we want to get that one in and get plenty of time yeah. so that, uh, so that they're, they're confident when they go skiing yeah. that they've got products that are really work for yeah. them. Yeah. Well, that makes sense from our point of view. I mean, that, I think that's the big message we wanted to sort of put across. It's, it's brilliant to hear your take on it. Yeah. Um, I think from our point of view, you know, we, we our hope in the future is that we run an academy week and everyone has been to someone. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we don't have to to understand that we know we're going to get some changes made with the uh, ski in the block because of other issues. You know, so I think you know the big message is they get this this job done properly. But also, I think that's that's the big thing that the ski industry needs is the, is the close relationship between the coach on the mountain and the pro in the shop, and, and, and people realising the importance of both of those roles. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, you, I mean, we do obviously the, the three slopes that you mentioned, there's um, the, the dry slopes and the being indoor at, at Chill Factor. Um, we do a lot of those sorts of boots, and um, 
consequently from that we get clients from that yeah. and yeah. they might even just send us a little sketch yeah you yeah. know yeah. a magic yeah. man saying yeah. just point this to the boot fitter yeah. and we'll understand that that means they've got little range of motion yeah, yeah. or have you got any footage things like that so i believe there should be a real relationship between coaches instructors and boot fitters yeah uh, unfortunately, most of the governing bodies don't really have equipment modules yeah, in, yeah, to work together in their in their courses, which I think is a real mistake. Well, since, since you know, obviously working with the likes of Alex yourself, Colin, I think from our point of view, we've started doing it as a, as a company. But I think our, our sort of being conscious of the idea that every time we're videoing a client, we're not just videoing them for that moment of their video analysis. We're actually saying, right, that that's a bit of footage that that person can then take. Yeah, you know, so also you guys to, to dig it a better outlet from what they're seeing. And there's nothing better for you, I guess, than when someone comes in to have you see, oh, I'm right, I can see this, that, and the other. And, you know, other half of them are thinking, oh, we can't do it today. So they yeah, over, yeah. over regular, some people play themselves down. Yeah. The video sort of, I mean, that's it, it says it all in one sort of strip. Yeah, there's a lot of battle and sexes with that. Most guys yeah, yeah. have got a little bit of an ego, yeah, and yeah, they'll yeah. over it, and then most ladies, you're looking at the form and then you look how they're interacting with the boot, maybe even just how they're walking in the shop. Yeah. You know, you know a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so having a bit of footage is always really good. Yeah. Um, and we also, when we're doing assessments for instructors, especially new guys, you know, yeah. get back people coming in saying, oh, I'm going to do my bays in. Yeah. I'm going to do my two, I'm going to do a gap. Um, and we will, when we're doing, when we're measuring the dots of flesh, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll stop at that point and yeah. I actually give some advice to, to prospective instructors about range of motion in the ankle and yeah. say, look, you know, if you've got a client and you know they understand yeah. what you're trying to impart yeah. to them, but they cannot demonstrate it, yeah. there's something going on. Yeah. And this is an easy test, you yeah. know, and I show them a little quick yeah. test to, yeah, yeah. to look at dorsal flex and in fact, if they fail that test, get them to a group yeah. and you'll get a better outcome. But this is the whole idea, I think, as well, for us, sort of taking this deep technique lab to the next level from our, from our sort of our thing we do, it's brilliant to have you on board as someone that, if someone wants to get an education on that, like you know, you, you educate us, so we in, in a way we feed off of your knowledge as yeah, coaches. Yeah. And then the flip side of it, you know, we, we want to sort of install that in, in a way that you you can also do a fair bit of our job, if that makes sense. You know, you've also got that knowledge so anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So you, you've got that knowledge to go to do it. Um, and I think that's the way we hope we grow this out is, and with the relationships you know, between the, the coach and the fitter. Um, mate, that was excellent. Thanks for last night and uh, and thanks for sharing the uh, the knowledge. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. It was awesome. Brilliant, mate. And these your these your your personal. Yeah, my personals. Yeah, my, my wonderful quantum factory freeze. I love them. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 yeah. So th this is actually um, it's a very interesting boot because it, it it could possibly change the whole industry. Really. So boots that are traditionally manufactured. Yeah. Uh, normally two feet tall, black like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, because of how they are removed from from moulds. They have to be they have quite a lot of structural integrity to them. Yeah. So that's thickness of plastic, geometer of plastic, how stiff the plastic is. What Davalo have done here is they've done something called a bonded shell. It's yeah. the first time it's ever been done. Really? So the shell is actually split longitudinally. Yeah. Okay. And you can see that. Yeah. So you can see it so yeah, yeah. close up. Yeah. So what that means is when it comes out of the mould, it, it doesn't need to be deformed to come out of the mould. It can just come straight out of the mould. Right, but because it's in two halves. Yeah. And then it's bonded together. And that means Del Velo can use much thinner plastics, yeah, which makes the boot physically very, very light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is polyamide with carbon fibres in yeah. it, and so it's a very, very strong super plastic. Lightweight. Yeah. Super lightweight. And you, you found the lateral uh, support of this boot really good, right, in comparison to other similar style boots. Yeah, I mean, it's a full, it's a full-on touring boot. Yeah. Um, so I took it to Iceland in, in April. We did a week's touring there with some buddies. And I, I was blown away by it. Um, I'm 105 kilos, yeah. so I'm a pretty, pretty big guy. Um, so I'm putting some pressure through. Yeah. And actually, when I have coaching, and yeah. I've had some coaching yeah. recently, yeah. the first thing the coach said to me was, Wow, you're in flex, yeah. like big flex. Because yeah, yeah. the 40 odd degrees of dorsal flex, I'm 105 kilos behind yeah. it. Yeah. So um, to have a, a touring boot that will support me yeah. is, is amazing. Yeah. The articulated range of motion in the ankle joint is more than my ankle would do. Yeah. It's 60 plus degrees. Um, and the other thing that I really liked about these, and I actually did a video myself about it, was when you're skidding with them and you, you, you're traversing across the slope, yeah. when you put your ski down, you've got to be able to rotate it onto the snow so yeah. the skin sticks. Yeah. So we're doing the opposite thing, aren't we? We're yeah. using the skins to grip, not the edges. Yeah. And that, this boot in particular, I found over the 
all the touring boots I've ever used, when you put your foot down and then rotate to get skin contact, it was so good. Really? Yeah, awesome. yeah really, really good. Well, that's quality, mate. Well, um, we'll be seeing you in uh, Birmingham, and you see this week. You will, yeah, look forward to it. Awesome, thanks, mate. Thanks for last night. Um, brilliant. All good.